Okay. So you guys can already do this, right? We, we've done stuff like this before. All we're going to do today, this is, there's really, this is just review. It's review and we're adding one parent function. We're moving into a unit where we're going to, we're going to talk about quadratic functions and we're going to do algebra. So let's close, close up Chromebooks, please. Chromebooks should be closed. Put them all the way closed. Thank you. Uh, so when we get into that stuff, that's going to be much more algebraic than what we've dealt with in a while. We're going to be doing things like solving quadratic equations by factoring, by completing the square, by stuff that you started doing in Algebra 1 that we'll review and take a little bit further, and then we'll move that on even into bigger polynomials and quadratics. But first step is this. First step is just, I think, is just connecting what we already know to the graph of a quadratic function. So this is nothing new. In this case, instead of f of x being the square root of x or absolute value of x, which are the two functions that we dealt with last time primarily, this time we're dealing with x squared. Okay? But everything else is the same. So all this other part we can do without even really thinking about the x squared. If we want to do something like vertically compress f of x by a factor of 1 half, what parameter controls vertical dilations? A, A does, right? A does vertical dilation. So that's telling us that A equals 1 half, right? Is all that same. Well, what about this part right here? If we're going to vertically reflect f of x, what's that telling us? Negative. negative. Ah, that A is negative. Okay? So the blue goes with just that blue negative sign, right? How about this part right here? If we're going to translate the function f of x up one unit, what parameter is that? Plus one on the outside. Okay, what, which one is that? K. Yep, it's K. So K equals 1. And then finally, out here at the end, uh, if it's going to translate 6 units to the right, which one is that? H. H. Yeah, so H is 6. And so all we've done here then is we're, we're going to create G of x, which is going to be based on our function x squared. Right, so we're going to start with a plain old x squared. I'm going to put the squared out there. You'll see why. And we're just going to add all these parameters to it. So we end up with, out front, we've got our negative 1 half. And remember, the vertical parts. The vertical parts are outside of the function, and the horizontal parts are inside the function. This is a vertical dilation, so it's outside the function. Now, if I want to... I'm going to subtract h, right? That's the number we subtract from x. So I'm going to have to subtract 6. But then I now, instead of just being plain old x squared, I'm replacing the x with an x minus 6. So what do I have to include? Parentheses. I have to include parentheses, right? So this is the inside of the function. Everything out here is on the outside of the function. And then the k goes where? Outside. Yeah, outside. Right. Plus 1. Good. OK? So a. Outside, K outside, H is inside. Now, what if we included a B? Where would that go? Well, in front of the X. Inside the, inside the brackets, right? So it's inside the function, but right in front of the X minus H. Right? So if there were a B there, it would look like this. We'd end up with A times the quantity B times x minus h squared plus k. Now notice that the b and the h, that's the horizontal dilation, horizontal translation. The horizontal parts are inside. The vertical dilation and the vertical translation are outside the function. So it's easy to kind of organize that, right? So that's no big deal. You guys can do that stuff, right? What about one like this? OK, now this time, we're, we're given a function, and we want to write the function in this form. Okay, now this one probably would make sense for us to just step back for a second. And let's take a look at what the parent graph looks like, because this is a new parent graph for us. We've dealt with absolute value functions. Those are really simple, right? Those are v's. The slope of the right leg of the v is just 1. So if I go horizontally from the vertex, if I go over by 3, I'll go up by 3, right? Over 1, go up 1. That's an easy one. And then the left, left side is just a mirror image. Square root was probably the hardest one. That's harder than this one, really. Square root was the one where when we went over by 1, we went up by 1. But I had to go over by 4 to go up by 2. Remember that stuff? So here's our new one. Now, I haven't really brought this up yet. But there is a really easy way 
to do to graph functions or to choose graphs of functions that I haven't really reminded you about, but it's very, very simple. All you have to do is make a t table, right? If I make a t table, remember that from algebra one? You're just going to have x in the left column and y. Y is just f of x in the right column. And if we know what the function is, we can just plug in x values to find the corresponding y values, and those just look like ordered pairs. So what is our special point? Where is our special point on this function? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. What do we call that, by the way? Origin. The origin. It is the origin. OK, but vertex. what if I, tra OK, it's so the vertex. Good. So for the parabola, I can still translate the parabola around. But the point of the parabola is what we call a vertex, just like we call the point of the v in an absolute, absolute value function the vertex, right? So that's the vertex. And we know that that's at the point, if I plug in 0, what's 0 squared? Zero, 0. So that looks like an ordered pair, doesn't it, when you read a t-table horizontally, right? What if we plug in 1? What's 1 squared? 1. 1. So from the vertex, if I have a horizontal distance of 1, my vertical distance is 1 then, because that's really what these are, right, in the shape of the parent graph. If my horizontal distance is 2, so I'm going to go over by 2, how far up do I go? 4. 4. It's 2 squared is 4. And what do you know? We go up 4 to get to that point. If I go over by 3, I go up by 9. And then the other side is just a mirror image, isn't it? If I go backwards by 1, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4, etc. Right? OK, so, so those, those points are really easy to remember, I think, because you're just squaring the horizontal distance to get the vertical distance, right? OK, so we do have a symmetry here, don't we? We notice that if I were to draw the parabola just the right half in wet ink, if I fold the page on that orange line, the imprint would make the, the ink would make the left side, right? So it's got this folding symmetry or mirror symmetry. So we call this the axis of symmetry, this line. In this case, for the parent graph, it's pretty simple because it's going right through the origin, right? But what if we were to translate this around? We're going we're to transform this parabola by translating it somewhere. The axis of symmetry is going to go with the parabola, right? It's always going to be the vertical line through the origin, in fact, isn't it? Right? So what if we do translate this thing around? If I start with the special point on 0, 0, and let's say we're going to translate it horizontally by h, because that's what h does, and vertically by k, where does the vertex end up? What are the coordinates of the vertex here? <coughs> Wherever h and k. h and k. That's it, wherever they are, right? The vertex is always going to be at hk. Right? You see that? So then what's going to be the equation of the axis of symmetry? Let's just do a quick reminder. How do we write the equations of horizontal and vertical lines? Like if I were to do this line right here, for example, what's the equation of that horizontal line? Y equals 7. Yeah. How come? OK, because it goes, the easy way to remember it is because it cuts through the y-axis at a value of 7. And so there's, that's an easy way to remember what the equation is. But you can even be a little more general than that. It, really, the reason that this is y equals 7 is because every one of the infinite points on that line has a y-coordinate of 7. It doesn't matter what the x-coordinate is. The y-coordinate is always 7. So what's the equation of this axis of symmetry going to be? x equals? Zero. But let's say we move it around. What's it going to be then? It's going to be the vertical line through the vertex. So if we know the x-coordinate of any point on this vertical line, we know the x-coordinate of all of them because they all have the same x-coordinate. So what's the x-coordinate of the vertex? Zero. Well, it is right now. But what if I slide it around? Wherever okay, so wherever the wherever the vertex ends up, right? What's the x-coordinate of the vertex? H. Yeah. So the axis of symmetry is always just going to be the line. Whoops. It's always just going to be the line x equals h. Okay. That's it. 
every time. All right, so now we got an idea what this thing looks like. Let's, let's try to do this problem. So we're going to compare this one to the parent graph. Well, h and k, all we have to do are just fill in the values of Oh, gosh. There we go. Just fill in the values of B, H, and K. That's it, right? I have to just figure out what those parameters are from the graph. Well, H and K are easy. One and negative two. One and negative two. Good. So there's H, K equals one, negative two. What about B? You know, this is the part where I think it's good for us to review a little bit. So what is B associated with? That's the parameter that has to do with what? Horizontal dilations. Horizontal dilations. Okay, now let's think about horizontal dilations. I feel like we've talked about this and we're really close, but I think there's still just a little bit of misconception about this. If I'm dilating something horizontally, it's only affecting the horizontal positions of all the points, right? The vertical ones are going to stay the same. They're just going to slide along vertically. Like, for example, if I were going to dilate this horizontally by a factor of 2, so I'm going to multiply all the horizontal distances by 2. What would that look like? Well, this point right here would go over to there, wouldn't it? Instead of being 1, it would become 2. This point right here, instead of having a horizontal distance of 2, it's going to go clear over to there where we have 4, right? But they're just going to slide horizontally. The vertical distances from the vertex remain unchanged. Everybody, can you kind of picture that? Okay. So. What about this then? Now, normally, our parent graph, if this is the vertex, we're, we're going to compare this point and I guess that point too if we want to, to where those points would be in the parent function. They've been dilated. Do you think they've been stretched or compressed? Sure. They've been stretched, haven't they? Right? Because normally, if I have a vertical distance of 1, that's going to stay the same. What should the horizontal distance be for our parent graph, x squared? One, right? Because the horizontal distance squared is the vertical distance. So one squared is one. So normally that point would be there, right? Normally if I went over by two, I would go up by four, right? And so that point would be, whoops, over by two, I go up by four, right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody see that? So the, the parent graph is going to look like this, but it's been stretched out. Well, how much? How much has it been stretched out? So it's going from, here's my axis of symmetry, right? So let's, that's what we're stretching from, right? We're compressing or stretching towards the axis of symmetry, right? So it starts off, the distance is, our initial value is 1 for the parent graph, after we dilate it, it ends up being how far? 3. three. Okay. So this distance is 3. So then what do we multiply by? 3. three. That's it. Right? <coughs> so the horizontal dilation factor is 3. And we can also remember that, because remember the horizontal dilation factor is always going to be the final horizontal distance, right? So we'll just call that delta x over the initial delta x. What's the final delta x? 3. What's the initial? 1. 3 over 1 is 3. OK, but this is a little tricky. If the horizontal dilation factor is 3, what's b? 1 third, right? What if the if the vertical dilation factor is seven? What's a? Seven. seven. Yeah. Right. But horizontal, you got to take the reciprocal. So <clears throat> this tells us then that b is one third, and all we got to do is plug those numbers in, and we're done. Easy, right? So we end up getting f of x equals one third is inside the function, right? Times x minus one, all squared. And then k is minus 2. That's it. No big. OK, last one. Let you work. Uh, what about this? So sketch a graph of this. See if you can identify. And really what we want to do 
is just make a list of what all the parameters are. Because if we know what the parameters are, we can sketch this thing pretty easily. So you got to fill in the blanks. What's A? What's B? What's H? What's K? And then those tell us vertical dilation, whoops, dilation factor. and horizontal dilation factor. So see if you can pick those numbers out. What are they? Audrey, which one of them? Tell me, tell me one of those parameters. Which, which one's that? The very first one. Ah, it's A. Good. Okay. So what's out in front? Good. This is telling us right here that A is negative 1. Okay. Another one. Uh, a 3. Well, what's right. the 3? B is 3, right? B is 3. Good. Okay. So we get B is 3. That's pretty hard to see. That's pretty hard to see. It's really hard to see. Oh. What's H? Negative two. Negative two, good. Okay, so H is negative two, because that's what's being subtracted from X. That one's a little tricky. What's K? Negative one. Okay, so K. So what's that make the vertical dilation factor? Negative one, good. What's that make the horizontal dilation? Uh, one, third. One, third. one third. Okay, so let's first do all that stuff. Okay. How do you get one third? Okay, so the the vertex is where then? Uh, negative two, one, negative four. Negative 2, negative 1. So back 2, down 1. There's the vertex, right? Okay, so now what about, let, let's take care of, so we'll check these off as we go. So this guy is, these are checked off. Okay, what about B? Let's take care of B. If the horizontal dilation factor is 1 third, it means we're going to multiply all the horizontal distances by 1 third. What's a convenient number to multiply by 1 third? 3. Okay, so we'll multiply... Whatever, when, whatever the, the point on our, on our original parent graph that is over 3, right, that's gonna, that horizontal distance is going to get reduced to just 1, multiplied by 1 third, right? So where is that? Well, normally on the parent graph, when I go over by 3, I go up by 9, right? So then here's going to be that point, right, on the parent graph. We would go over three, and we would go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there, to that point. But on our graph, we're going to go over three, and instead of, or when we go up nine, instead of going over three, we're going to go over how much? One. One. One third times three, right? So then, from this, there's our axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry, we're only going to go over to there, right? the horizontal distance is only going to be 1 instead. So look what that did. It made it a lot skinnier. So it's going to look like that. Right? Do you see that? Instead of this. Oops. Right? Made it a lot skinnier. We squeezed it in by a factor of 1 third. Okay, now what about this A? What's that do? Makes it negative. Okay, that's reflecting it <laughs> just vertically, right? Over over the vertex. So when we go to this point, so I'll make this check kind of that purple color. So now that's going to turn this into the purple graph. All it does is it takes this compressed, horizontally compressed parabola, flips it vertically, right? So now it looks like this. Tall and skinny, but it's been flipped vertically. You were missing one thing. What did, what did he not do? Oh, 
No, that, that's part of the shape. But there's something up there that we didn't do. The the uh, what is it? The negative x. The negative x. Yeah, look at the negative x. Right here, what does that do? So I've done all this stuff, right? That's fine. We did, we did everything up there perfectly. But what do we accomplish if we turn the x negative? It flips over the y-axis. Ah, Good. So then this whole thing right here is going to have to get reflected over that y-axis. So the vertex, instead of being left 2 and down 1, it's going to be right 2 and down 1. Right? And so it's going to end up looking like that instead. So that is our answer. Right? Make sense? OK. Go. Work. I'd let, here's what I'd like to see you do. I would like to see you on the 3.3 practices. I just want to see you do one problem from each part of those, right? From each group, and then after that, you're free to do what you want to do. But I want to make sure that this, you get this.